Hello! In this video, we're going to write another string mutation function. Hopefully, you already have the string functions project from an earlier video. If not, get it now. If you're enrolled in CSSE 120 or 221, you can check out string functions from your subversion repository. Otherwise, you can download the zip file. Here's the problem we're going to solve. We want to implement the camel case function that takes a string and mutates it so that the result is in camel case. In other words, we want to remove all spaces and capitalize the first letter of each subsequent word. Here are a few examples. The first example shows that even leading characters should be capitalized, like the H in hello. The second example just points out that we need to handle multiple spaces in the input. The third example shows us that digits are left alone and that letters following digits aren't capitalized. Finally, the last example shows that intercaps, like the A in the zombie apocalypse input, are left alone. Let's try coding this. I'm in Eclipse, and I've gone ahead and typed in a few test cases in our main function. I've got test cases for each of the four examples that were in the slides. Let me go ahead and run that. And I get the output in the console. And I can see that I'm not getting any of the expected results, but at least I know that my test infrastructure is working. So let's find the camel case function in the code and go ahead and implement it. If I hit control O, I get an outline of all the functions in my file, and I can click on camel case and jump straight to it. So that's a handy shortcut, control O for outline. So now I want to start by solving a smaller problem. And so the first thing I'd like to try to do is just to remove the spaces from the strings. And if I can solve that, then I can worry about the capitalization next. So as I think about it, there are a couple of options for removing the spaces. One option would be, as soon as I find a space, I can loop through the rest of the string and pull back all the other characters that come after that space to fill in the space. Another option is I could make a separate character array to store the results as I work on them. And then when I'm done, I could copy that character array back into the parameter str. Now, the second option here uses extra memory. And maybe we think that's a bad thing, but the first option actually could take extra time. Suppose we had a really long string with lots of spaces, say the text of War and Peace. Most of the characters would get moved lots of times, and so that would be a very time-expensive way to solve the problem. So I think in this case, we'll use the second option and create an extra character string to use. We'll spend a little extra memory, but it'll save us some time. So the first thing I need to do is allocate a temporary array to store the result. And I actually need to give a size to this, and so I'm just going to allocate a 1,000 character long result string. Now I'm making a somewhat dangerous assumption there that a thousand characters would be enough. And if this was code that we're using in a critical application, we'd actually have to do something to make sure that the links were OK. In fact, we could add a check for that here. We could add in a check that if string length of str is greater than 999, Then we'll just return without doing anything. And we could change the code to actually have an error code that we'd return, and that would be even more robust. OK, so I've got a place for my result. Now let's go through and try to remove the spaces. So I'm going to loop over str. So let me get a loop index for that. And I'm going to go through the whole thing. So I'll use a for loop. And I'm going to keep looping as long as the character that I'm at is not the end of the string. OK, so there's my loop that will pass over str. Now for each of those, I need to check whether the character I'm on is a space. So if str at position i, I'll say I want to call the isSpace function on that, isSpace. Well, let's see. If it is a space, I guess I want to ignore it. So really, I want to take action if it's not a space. So let's change this if to say if 
not is space str of i. Well, if it's not a space, then I want to copy it into my result. And so I want to put it somewhere in result. Well, let me try that. But that's not really the right thing, because then it puts it in the exact same spot that it was in str. What I really need to do is put it into a new spot, not using up any room in result for the space that I want to skip over. So if I'm going to do that, I actually need another index variable here. And so let me create another one. And I'm going to call this result index and initialize it at 0. And so now down in line 48, I actually want to put the value I'm moving into the result index position of result. And then after I've done that, I've used up that position. So I'll increment result index. And so I only copy str at position i if it's not a space. And I always copy it into the next position in my result array. And then I move along. And the last thing I need to do to get the result is fill in the last slot in result with a null terminator. So I'm going to set the very last position of result that I get to to be the null terminator. So now result should be the right answer. Now what I really need to do then is copy that back into str. And we've got a function for doing that. So I'm going to use string copy. And then the first argument is the destination. So I'm going to copy this back into str. And the second argument is the source, which in this case is the result. So this code should loop over str, copy the non-space characters into result, add a null terminator onto result, and then finally copy result back into str. So let's go ahead and run that. And now we see, if we look down the result list, that we actually have successfully removed all the spaces. So we've satisfied our first goal. That's good work. We should celebrate that. Now the next thing we want to do is actually capitalize the characters that we move if those characters happen to follow a space. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, it seems like one way to do that would be to have a, a variable that tells us whether or not the next character needs to be capitalized. So let's go ahead and create a variable for that purpose. So I've got a variable now called should upcase next. And I set that to 0 initially. And so now as I go through the loop, if it's not a space, then I'm just copying it. But if I do see a space, now I want to set my should upcase next to be true, or 1 in C so that the next character I see, I'll actually capitalize. Now how am I actually going to do that capitalization? Well, I'm going to do that when I move the characters over. So inside the uh, if part of this statement, I'm going to add another if inside it. So if I should upcase next, then I'm going to do my copy, just like I was here. But I'm going to call the to upper function on the character from str as I move it over. Otherwise, if I'm not capitalizing, I'll just copy it over without changing anything. All right, we're close. There's actually still a couple of bugs in here. But let's run the program and see what happens. All right, well, the first bug that I see is from all this shouting. And the trouble here is we did capitalize the w in world and the t in the. But then we kept capitalizing. So what we have to do is up here after line 50, after we've actually upcased the next one, then we have to turn should upcase next back to false so that we don't keep shouting after the first capital letter. So let's make that change and run it. OK, now we're closer. We've got the inner caps like we should have. And we're successfully not capitalizing after the digit. The only problem we have now is we didn't actually capitalize the first character in Zombie Apocalypse and in Hello World. So if we look at our code, well, that's, that's fairly straightforward. We just have to set 
the should upcase next flag to say that the first character should be capitalized. So I'll change that uh, line 46 to a 1 and run that again. And now we're getting the right answer. So that takes care of it. We've solved the camel case problem. Hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, I'm Kurt. Catch you later.